hello, everybody. I'm Beth Johnston. I'm the Chief Community Engagement Officer here at the FSHD Society. And together here with my colleagues, um, June Kinoshita and Jamshi, Dr. Jamshid Arjumand, um, we'd like to welcome you to our FSHD University webinar. Um, the FSHD Society offers these free webinars and so many other educational events to educate and empower everyone affected by FSHD to become their, both, their own best advocates. And today, to speak about what every newly diagnosed person should know, we welcome our guest, um, Dr. Bakri El Sheik. Uh, Dr. El Sheik is a neurologist who specializes in neuromuscular medicine and clinical neurophysiology. Boy, is that a mouthful. <laughs> He currently serves as the principal investigator um, of the FSHD Clinical Trial Research Network at Ohio State University and is the director of OSU's Muscular Dystrophy Association Care Center. He has extensive clinical trial experience in rare neuromuscular disorders, and he is involved in current, current FSHD trials as well. So, um, without further ado, Dr. Um, El Sheik, we're seeing your uh, presenter view. I don't know if that's what you want to show. There we go. Now we're seeing um, your slides. So without further ado, um, Dr. El Sheik, welcome. Well, thank you. Can you hear me well? We can. Okay, great. Uh, it's really my true pleasure to be here uh, today. And uh, thank you, Beth. Thank you, June. And thanks to the FSSD Society to give me the opportunity to speak to you today about uh, FSSD. Um, so uh, my goal today is to provide you with some essential information about FSSD uh, in the next uh, 20 uh, minutes or so. I will provide an overview of uh, FSSD highlighting the pathogenesis and going over clinical features and management, and also briefly touch on current uh, research. So uh, FSHD is a genetic disorder that leads to progressive weakness and muscle atrophy. It's named after its distinctive pattern of weakness, which is most uh, consistently observed in the early stages of the disease, and it does affect the facial muscles, as well as the muscles around the scapular, uh, the scapula or the shoulder blade and the upper arms or what we refer to as the humeral muscles. So FSHD is the third most common muscular dystrophy following dystrophinodoses like Duchenne and Becker's and myotonic dystrophy. It has an estimated prevalence of one in 15 to 20,000. Uh, individual. There are uh, two genetically different but clinically identical types. The FSHD uh, type 1 is the most common, accounting for approximately 95% of the cases, while FSHD 2 represent the remaining 5%. I will go over the uh, genetic differences between the uh, two types later. Uh, symptoms onset of FSHD can occur at any age, ranging from infancy to late adulthood. However, it's most commonly observed in the second decade of life. 10% manifest before age 10 and, and uh, is referred to as an early onset FSHD. It is important to note that about approximately 30% of individuals may not be aware of their involvement due to the mild degree of uh, manifestations. There is significant variability in the severity and the course of FSHD. However, it's worth noting that uh, around 20% of individuals over the age of 50 will require, will require use of a wheelchair. So, the pathogenesis is, and genetics of FSD is really complex. Let me try to uh, break it down. So the, 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 the first fact to know is there is a DUX4 that is toxic to the muscle cell. So let's just start with that fact first. So FSHD is caused by inappropriate expression of a normally dormant transcription factor, which is the DUX4. So normally, uh, at chromosome 4, 
there is a, an area where there are a repeat uh, sequences, what we refer to as D4Z4 repeats, and that area is highly misolated. And in that setting, the DUX4 is silent. So as you see on the figure, uh, you could see that the, the little triangles are really the number of repeats and the uh, little blue circles are the misolation. And so the, the, the misolation uh, related to the normal lengths of the D4Z4 repeats is keeping the DUX4 dormant and it's not expressed. And that's really the, the way we want it uh, to be. However, in FSHD1, there is contraction of that D4Z4 area. And so you could see on the second, uh, the middle part of the figure that we have less triangle and we have less uh, blue uh, circles. And so that's uh, less miscellation as well as contraction of the uh, D4Z4 uh, uh, segment. So this uh, will turn on the DUX4. Now, the turn on DUX4 uh, uh, require a specific DNA sequence after the last repeat. Uh, that sequence is called the A sequence, and that sequence is needed to stabilize the product from the uh, DUX4 DNA. So, so we have three uh, things. So you do have uh, uh, contraction of the D4Z4, less miscellation, you need a permissive allele, which we call it the A allele. And in that setting, we have uh, expression of the DUX4, and that's, uh, that's, uh, that's what's my toxic or toxic to the muscle. Now, the rarer type, which is the FSHD2, there is no repeat contractions. And so you could see the repeat contractions are here are more than uh, 11, but there is a mutation that is causing uh, hypomycillation. And so, uh, so hypomycillation is common to both uh, types. And so you also get the hypomycillation by a mutation commonly in a gene called SMCHD1. Uh, there are some other genes, but ultimately you get decreased methylation and you need the permissive uh, 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 um, allele, which is the, 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 the uh, A sequence, and, and subsequently you get uh, increased uh, 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 transcription of the DUX4 which is injurious to the uh, uh, muscle. Now, FSHD1 is inherited as an autosomal dominant uh, fashion, and that means with each pregnancy, a child will have a 50% chance of developing the disease. This is a rough correlation of the, there is a, a rough correlation between the number of repeats and the disease severity. And this is most apparent in those who do have one to three repeats, and on this uh, study, you could see uh, uh, the, the, the y-axis is a number of, uh, the, the x-axis is a number of repeats. The y-axis is the FSHD clinical score. The higher the score, the more severe the phenotype. And uh, the dots in this study refer to uh, early onset uh, disease and uh, the green to the age match and the uh, triangle, uh, the blue triangle to the uh, duration match. Well, but the takeaway home from this is that uh, those individuals with one to three repeats tend to have infantile onset or early onset. They have more severe weakness and they also have higher incidence of extra muscular manifestation. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, the FHHD type two is uh, inherited as a diagenic inheritance, and that means two different gene mutations working together to cause the disorder. It requires a pathogenic variant in one of those chromatin modifier genes like the SCM uh, CHD1. As well, uh, they do have repeat levels that are somewhere between 11 to 20, in addition to permissive to the permissive allele before you can. Uh, uh, that leads to the hypomycillation and ultimately the expression of blood spore and injury to the muscle. So let's talk a little bit more about the clinical feature. 
So as, as, as I mentioned earlier, so uh, the facial weakness is commonly the initial manifestation of FSHD. However, it can be subtle and often can uh, go unrecognized. Affected individuals often experience difficulty smiling, whistling, trouble drinking from a straw, or they have incomplete eye closure during sleep. There are various degrees of severity, and as you could see in the uh, uh, figure, uh, so uh, closing the eyes, so you could see it varies from the ability to partially bury the eyelashes to uh, 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 a, a, uh, the eyelashes are more apparent, to not able to uh, bring the eyelids together. And so you could see uh, the uh, eye opening. Similarly, for uh, uh, puckering the mouse, and you could see the ability, and, and usually the muscles that tend to be involved are usually, uh, uh, the, the, two, the two ones are the circular muscles around the eye and, and the muscles around the mouse, and you could see uh, the, 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 the asymmetry and the lack of ability to pucker the mouse, and, and essentially the lack of movement on the uh, figure in the middle on the, on the, on the right uh, corner. Uh, also, uh, 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 buffing the cheeks, you could see also that uh, somebody is able to trap air inside their, their, their mouse and, and, and to less uh, extent in, in a moderate one. And, and essentially there is limited to no movement on, on somebody with severe uh, uh, facial weakness. So there was one study that, that looked at 87 uh, individuals with FSHD and, and 55 control, they were videotaped and the severity of the facial weakness uh, was, was, was analyzed and they came and correlated with other measures of uh, disease uh, outcome, clinical outcome as disease severity. And so they did find that around 10% would ha have a very mild facial weakness. Those were mostly male and they all uh, uh, had longer D4 uh, repeats in the seven uh, uh, to nine units uh, range. So a more severe facial weakness correlated with an overall severe uh, uh, disease uh, and shorter D4Z4 repeat, but it did not really relate uh, to the disease uh, duration. So facial weakness is followed by shoulder girdle or uh, shoulder blades uh, uh, muscle weakness affecting uh, the muscles which we call the scapular stabilizers. And those scapular stabilizers, those are the muscles that will hold the shoulder blade to the uh, chest uh, wall or the thoracic cage. And namely those, there was a muscle called the trabezius, as well as one called the uh, serratus anterior and rhomboids. And, and those uh, muscles, when they are weak, we end by having the scapular plate sticking and, and, and what we refer to as a scapular winging. And so the winging is often asymmetric and can be subtle as in this uh, 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 case. And you could see also a little bit of atrophy of the trapezius muscle. And you could accentuate that winging of the scapula by elevation of the uh, uh, arm. And so that's really what uh, you see on the picture on the right side. Also, uh, pectoral muscles at the anterior chest are usually weak and atrophic. And the picture on the uh, left uh, show a normal bulk pectoral muscle with a normal slope of the clavicle. So the clavicle uh, slope uh, uh, down towards the uh, sternum or towards the mid uh, chest, as you could see with the, uh, with the yellow uh, arrow. And, and, and you could see around the axillary fork, you don't see any indentation in that, in that area. In, in, in early or when you do have early uh, weakness on the pectoral muscles, you might see just some subtle atrophy and you could see that the straightening of the uh, scapula, uh, the, the clavicle. So you could see that the clavicle is uh, uh, straight on this patient and, and, and with, with more weakness and severe uh, weakness, you could see that uh, the, the clavicle slope is, is changed, more atrophy, and you see this deepening of the uh, axillary uh, uh, fault, 
and 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 uh, and, and, and so this is those are uh, consequences of weakness and atrophy of the uh, pectoral muscles. So uh, you could also have wasting of the uh, biceps and the uh, uh, triceps muscles. Those are the humeral uh, muscles. And as you could see with the picture on the left, that there is relative sparing of the very proximal arm muscles, which we refer to as the deltoid, and as well as the forearm uh, muscles. And some uh, 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 you might see that a Popeye uh, appearance is uh, arm appearance is 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 used uh, in 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 some of the uh, literature. There is also uh, involvement of the uh, leg uh, muscles, and you could that could result in asymmetric uh, foot uh, drop. And 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 uh, as you see uh, on the picture, so there is weakness also on the right uh, leg, but more so on the uh, left leg, and those are the uh, muscles of the uh, anterior compartment of the leg that are responsible of uh, uh, dorsiflexion of the uh, ankle. So the proximal muscles might be, uh, of the leg muscles might be involved later in the disease. Weakness of the abdominal and back muscles is also common, and that could cause lordosis which is that curvature, exaggerated curvature of the uh, lumbar uh, spine area and lead to protrusion of the uh, belly. There are other skeletal deformities that are described in the setting of FSHD, uh, and those include bending the spine uh, sideways, or that's called uh, scoliosis, and there is a, a small percentage of patients who could have uh, deformity at the uh, uh, breastbone or the sternum. Uh, it's called the sunken breastbone and that's called the pectus excavatum is another name for, for that. So uh, the weak uh, abdominal uh, muscles can produce uh, what we call as the uh, divor sign. And, and that's basically, uh, if somebody is lying through buying and you look at the umbilicus, and uh, they attempt to flex their neck, you could see migration or uh, movement of the umbilicus uh, uh, usually uh, upward, and that's really reflective of the uh, weakness of the uh, abdominal muscles. Uh, also, other axial muscles with difficulty uh, sitting from the supine uh, position could be uh, seen. So it is important to note that there are variation of the presentation and, and what we described is, is some of the classic uh, 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 forms. There are some individuals who can have some atypical presentations and uh, the, the, the weakness might be limited to the axial muscles surrounding the spine, leading to uh, neck weakness or, 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 or a, a posture that looks like as if the spine is, is, is pain. Uh, the image on the left illustrates uh, a good range of uh, motion during passive movement, but notice noticeable weakness uh, became uh, apparent when the uh, individual was asked to extend the neck on their own. Uh, additionally, uh, some form of focal atrophy of just one part of the limb is also uh, described. Now, there are... Uh, uh, certain manifestations that do occur outside the uh, uh, muscle, and we will go over some of those. So vision is typically normal in FSHD, despite the presence of some retinal vascular changes. Those are telangiectasias and, and, and microaneurysms, and they were uh, uh, found in up to 50% of the uh, patient. But as I said, vis uh, uh, vision is typically normal in, 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 in FSHD. There is a small uh, percentage, usually with early onset and, and large uh, deletion, as I alluded to earlier, that com extra muscular complications are more expected to see in those with larger uh, deletions, where you could get what we call Coates uh, uh, retinal syndrome, 
where there is dilatation of the vessels and exudation of the uh, its content, uh, or sometimes development of retinal detachment and uh, uh, loss of uh, vision. So um, another uh, uh, system that could be involved is, is really the respiratory uh, function. It is usually preserved. And so uh, in, 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 in individuals with FSHD, so approximately 10% of FSHD patients, if they are tested with spirometry and, and lung function tests, uh, they, they were uh, shown to have uh, some uh, restrictive lung uh, disease. Uh, maybe around a third are, uh, of the non-ambulatory patients can also have some respiratory insufficiency. There was a Dutch population-based study that looked specifically to uh, those with respiratory insufficiency requiring uh, re uh, nocturnal ventilatory uh, support, and they did uh, estimate a 1% of the FSHD uh, uh, population to have that. And the risk factors associated with that were severity of the muscle disease, wheelchair dependency, and significant uh, spine and, uh, and thoracic deformity. A recent longitudinal study showed uh, stable respiratory function, those are, 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 are looked at over five years uh, period. Uh, however, there was a small subset of patients where there was a, a decline, and those subset of uh, patients were noted to have severe muscle weakness, again, spinal and thoracic deformities, and they also had a uh, fast decline in their uh, axial muscle uh, strength. With regard to the heart, uh, the uh, asymptomatic uh, arrhythmias, which is or supraventricular arrhythmia from the top of the heart, was described in 5%. Uh, uh, and, 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 and in one study, uh, a type of conduction uh, defect called uh, the right bundle branch block uh, was uh, described. No, no progression was observed in that study over eight years, and there is no uh, cardiomyopathy in FSHD. And so in general, in absence of symptoms, uh, usually uh, uh, there is uh, no uh, regular monitoring for the heart in FSHD, and I'll talk a little more about that. Uh, hearing loss, again, was described in those with uh, severe contractions of the D4-D4 region, and that's usually with high frequency. Uh, uh, this is as well as cognitive changes and uh, mental changes and seizures which are seen in uh, infants. Dysphagia is rare, also in FSHD, so swallowing is usually fine. It can be uh, impacted or affected uh, in, 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 in a few uh, ways because of weakness of the jaw muscles and the uh, lingual uh, muscles. Sorry. Uh, now, with regard to the bone health, so there was one study that was really well conducted. It was a cross-sectional, uh, but it did find that uh, uh, low vitamin D level in, in, in a third of that cohort and relatively high prevalence of traumatic uh, fracture in, 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 in patients who are uh, uh, at least on the younger side below, uh, before, below the age of 65. FSHD does not automatically equate to uh, reduce bone marrow density due to considerable variability and, and, and overall mean uh, whole body uh, bone, bone uh, mineral density. They were 11%, uh, however, had greater than age-related reduction in their uh, bone mineral density and their D-score uh, was uh, reduced. And, and so, uh, and those again uh, were, were uh, patients uh, linked to lack of mobility. So when individuals affected with FSHD were asked to report their uh, uh, symptoms, they did uh, uh, mention uh, five scenes with uh, have uh, a, a more extensive uh, prevalence. And, and those are all related to weakness, uh, uh, mostly at the shoulder or the arms, uh, back, chest, and abdomen uh, weakness and inability to do activities. 
uh, but also uh, noted to be uh, prevalent is things like fatigue and, and, and pain. And so uh, there are other uh, things beyond the motor uh, uh, limitations that are uh, seen with the uh, disease. Now, uh, when it comes to pain in uh, FSHD, there were field trials that were done, and I picked one uh, from, from, from UK, that was a registry uh, study. And, and again, as I alluded to in the previous slides, so we, we talk about 80% uh, percent of uh, FSHD patients experiencing pain at one uh, uh, time. And so uh, the study from the UK uh, registry showed us that the, the common sites that uh, causes pain are, are related to the shoulder and the uh, lower back, but, but other, other uh, areas are also uh, involved. So you can see uh, uh, legs and hips, uh, as well as arms and, 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 and feet and, uh, and, and hands. So uh, uh, from several, several treatment modalities are used, including the uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, some used opioids, and again, this is a study from uh, uh, UK, uh, analgesics, antidepressants, and uh, anti-epileptic uh, medications. But actually, uh, also a good percentage of uh, individuals were using non-pharmacological intervention, uh, mainly things like exercise, uh, water therapy, acupuncture, massage, and, 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 and heat. So with regard to pregnancy and FSHD, this was from a, a survey-based uh, uh, study by uh, Dr. Emma Cifaloni uh, uh, that uh, included 30-some uh, uh, women with 105 gestation and uh, 78 uh, live births. There was favorable outcome overall, uh, and there was low birth weight and the, uh, also the combined rate of uh, operative deliveries was uh, higher than in the uh, general population. Uh, in some of the uh, uh, mothers reported worsening uh, uh, function uh, during the uh, pregnancy. So um, next I'm gonna talk about management and uh, on the management, I'm really gonna basically highlight uh, 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 a very relevant document that was developed uh, or published back in 2015. And that uh, document was the AAN, uh, the American Academy of Neurology Guidelines, uh, and, and uh, for uh, evaluation, diagnosis, and management of uh, uh, FSHD. And, and as you could see that it was uh, also uh, uh, AEM was involved and it was endorsed by MDA and it was endorsed by the FSHD uh, uh, Society. And so uh, the document has uh, three main uh, areas that it did address. It talked about uh, uh, diagnosis and then predictive subsidiarity and then talked about uh, 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 complications and, and, and management. From a diagnostic point of view, usually uh, we go with the uh, clinical picture and the clinical uh, phenotype. So those tests like blood work of EMG and muscle biopsy, uh, is, they're not necessarily uh, our first uh, uh, go-to at this, at this uh, stage, but it's also good to know that that muscle enzyme is usually normal or is slightly elevated. The EMG can show, uh, uh, that's a test of the nerve on the muscle, can show findings to suggest that uh, muscle uh, uh, injury. And then there are on the muscle uh, biopsy, you could see non specific changes uh, uh, reflecting, uh, or changes reflecting muscular uh, dystrophic changes. And, and there are uh, uh, around a third of uh, patients would have uh, inflammatory infiltrate within the uh, muscle uh, biopsy. And then, and then we also have the uh, genetic uh, testing. And so, uh, as you can see from the guidelines that uh, genetic testing, so a diagnosis can be made if there is already a family member who have the uh, uh, disease and somebody did develop uh, symptoms so that they, that way the diagnosis could be uh, made. 
However, if there is atypical presentation, genetic confirmation is going to be needed. And uh, as we talked earlier about that, the larger the 4D4 deletion is a, a predictor of disease severity with earlier age of onset and more uh, uh, severe disease. And they also did uh, put together a, an algorithm. There are different ways that the genetic confirmation is done by different labs, but there are the three major things we talked about which is really looking at the D4-Z4 uh, repeat size, uh, looking for the permissive uh, A sequence, as well as the methylation uh, level, and, and, and either running all of those together or running them sequentially uh, to reach a, a diagnosis of uh, FSHD type one, where you see the contraction of the D4-Z4 repeat, uh, uh, whereas in the FSHD2, uh, uh, you would uh, uh, look for the permissive allele and the reduced uh, methylation. So when it comes to treatment, uh, uh, there are the treatment at this stage is mostly uh, supportive, although we have an exciting pipeline of uh, medications uh, uh, that are uh, being uh, tested. So the treatment is really, uh, is, is, it should be uh, uh, following a proactive uh, model rather than a reactive uh, model. And that means involvement with uh, different uh, uh, disciplines within the clinic. So a multidisciplinary clinic uh, that is, is gonna uh, provide uh, all what is needed in, in those clinic uh, visits. So occupational and physical therapy are usually indicated. Those, uh, are in, in, in addition to the uh, exercise program and posture and, 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 and assessments related to strengths and assessments related to outcome uh, measure, they could uh, also uh, help with the uh, uh, adaptive equipment based on, on, on need, uh, uh, provide uh, or prescri uh, prescribe uh, appropriate uh, or sources. Uh, so for instance, an abdominal binder uh, or a corset to uh, help with the uh, spine uh, curvature, uh, uh, the AFOs or the uh, braces and then there are different uh, types to help with the uh, foot uh, drop. And, and again, uh, things related to uh, posture and, 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 and exercise program. Now, uh, based on the guidelines, so, Baseline pulmonary function test is, is needed on uh, uh, all uh, individuals affected with FSHD. And then uh, 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 monitoring uh, the uh, lung function on a regular basis, particularly on those with abnormal tests at the start or with severe proximal weakness or skeletal changes or uh, anybody who does have any other condition that can also affect ventilation, uh, like cardiac disease or, or uh, COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So uh, also <clears throat> we should screen for uh, uh, symptoms of hyperventilation, those who also have excess daytime uh, sleepness or uh, uh, frequent nocturnal arousals, morning headaches, those patients should be uh, 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 seen uh, at the uh, pulmonary or the sleep clinic to have some nocturnal sleep uh, monitoring and a decision made about need for uh, nocturnal uh, uh, ventilation. So for those who do not have uh, regular uh, pulmonary function, uh, then uh, prior to any uh, surgery or prior to any general anesthesia, uh, testing might need to be uh, done because that might uncover asymptomatic uh, respiratory compromise. As I as I mentioned earlier, uh, <clears throat> routine cardiac screening is not uh, essential. However, we screen for symptoms whether somebody has shortness of breath, chest pain, or palpitation, and 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 that needs to be uh, 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 then cardiac evaluation to be considered. So from, from a hearing loss point of, of view, uh, so all young uh, children with FSHD at diagnosis uh, and nearly uh, thereafter uh, should be screened for uh, hearing uh, loss. 
again, uh, uh, when, when, when people are seeing the first time uh, a dilated eye exam or, or, or a fundoscopy uh, could be done to see if there is any abnormalities. Uh, also, uh, for, for those with larger uh, deletion, referral to ophthalmologists, is particularly a retina specialist for, for um, assessment. The, the uh, again, based on what you see uh, initially on that very first evaluation, a determination can be made on if, 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 if additional uh, assessments are needed. Uh, pain is one of the things, as I alluded to earlier or discussed earlier, that's really one of the common uh, things and, and, and uh, treatment for, for, for pain. In, in some, uh, it can, uh, things can improve with uh, physical therapy uh, evaluation or uh, medications and we usually uh, prefer to use uh, non-opioid uh, strategies. Uh, but uh, uh, trials of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory, uh, sometimes we use antidepressant or anti-epileptic uh, medications for chronic pain. Um, so be on, 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 uh, the guidelines also uh, uh, mentioned that uh, albuterol, corticosteroid, and deltazem, there is not enough uh, data uh, for those to be prescribed on a regular uh, basis. And so... Uh, those are usually not uh, uh, prescribed. So for the subset of patients where we, uh, they do have good uh, deltoid function, uh, a, a, a surgical scapular fixation can be uh, done and that can help with the range of uh, motion. Now, um, for, for the exercise, uh, there is some data on exercise and overall exercise is not harmful, which is really an important thing to know. Uh, however, I also would want to uh, say that there is a uh, benefit to low intensity aerobic exercise, uh, whether in the form of cycling or, 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 or water uh, uh, or swimming or uh, uh, walking and uh, an expert uh, panel uh, uh, recommended uh, three times a week for a 30 uh, minute per session. And so uh, what I usually say about exercise is uh, uh, that's really the benefit of, of uh, being uh, evaluated at one of the multidisciplinary clinic where uh, a skilled and experienced physical service uh, who've worked with the disease in the uh, past can help provide individualized exercise uh, program. So with regard to strength uh, training, safety is really important. And again, that individualized uh, program uh, can help determine uh, uh, low, medium uh, weight uh, resistance program that's appropriate uh, for, for, for an individual. And again, that's really makes me uh, say uh, about the variability, not only the variability in the uh, uh, muscles involved in the same person. So certain muscles are much weaker compared to the, to the other uh, muscle. And so it's important uh, to keep that in mind to avoid uh, injury to uh, uh, joints. Uh, so, uh, and, and I do apologize. I think my slides uh, uh, were a little bit out of order, but uh, this is going back to the surgery. And I think uh, uh, for, uh, for somebody with good uh, deltoid, uh, the surgery is, is, is extensive and it does have a risk of, of uh, bleeding and, 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 and uh, injury to the uh, brachial plexus or even uh, fracturing the uh, rib. And it does require some time for uh, recovery. And so benefit versus risk, uh, needs to be uh, uh, weighed. And again, that's really very uh, individualized and very important is really uh, the, the, the surgeon who is doing the uh, surgery. Uh, this is from a, you could see from the picture, uh, the wing scapula, and you can see the surgical scar on the right, and you could see the improvement in the range of uh, motion 
uh, on the uh, right corner uh, picture again. So that improvement in uh, function, and sometimes it also can uh, help decrease uh, the pain. But again, it's only for a selected uh, uh, patients. So what to expect over time? Um, and again, I go back to uh, saying the course is variable. There is marked variation between individuals. There are marked variations even within uh, families and even within the same person, certain muscle groups are affected uh, differently. Overall, uh, the process is slowly progressive. That being said, uh, sometimes you see this stepwise progression with uh, sudden uh, worsening over, over uh, weeks to months of uh, a loss of function in a certain uh, uh, region. And so that makes predicting disease course can be uh, uh, challenging. Um, or, uh, uh, so uh, I, I mentioned that earlier that around 20% over the age of 50 uh, will require use of the uh, chair uh, and, and, and FSHD uh, is, is associated for the most uh, part with normal life expectancy. And, and, and one last quick slide is and, 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 uh, to, to, to just make a note of ongoing research trial. There were several trials that were done in the, in the, in the past. And, 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 and most of those trials did not show any uh, major uh, significant uh, uh, change in the disease process. However, as I stated earlier, there are some promising uh, medications that are uh, uh, currently in the pipeline. Before I, I uh, say, uh, more about the interventional uh, trial. I wanted to talk a little bit about clinical trial readiness. Uh, that's really critical for optimizing outcome measures and understanding the natural history of the disease and improving access to trials. We've noted that from other diseases where, uh, 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 like SMA, where, where there are uh, FDA approved treatment that are disease uh, modifying the importance of having uh, this uh, uh, information. So for current clinical uh, uh, studies or research studies, you could always visit clinicaltrial.gov or you could visit the FSSB Society uh, link to uh, clinical uh, trials. So I'll put a plug for a couple of the uh, 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 natural history uh, and uh, uh, outcome and biomarker uh, trials. So uh, uh, the resolve trial and then the move and the move uh, plus trials and, 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 and those you could also find in clinicaltrials.gov if you're looking for uh, sites. So those motor outcomes to validate evaluations in FSHD. Uh, I'll also plug in for a, a study by uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Dr. Kevin Flanagan, at uh, Nationwide, also looking at to validate biomarkers uh, in uh, FSHD, including uh, tissue uh, uh, biomarkers. For the treatment trials, uh, losmabimod, uh, uh, the REACH uh, trial is uh, enrolling, and that's really a phase three uh, uh, trial for uh, the uh, losmabimod, the compound, which is uh, an inhibitor for uh, MAPK, uh, and that's really considered uh, suppress uh, to a uh, potent suppressor of the DUX4 uh, expression. As I said earlier, that DUX4 is really the major drive of the uh, muscle cell uh, toxicity in FSHD. And so uh, there was uh, an initial phase two uh, uh, trial that uh, showed some uh, uh, signals uh, in, uh, on, on some of the uh, secondary uh, endpoints. Uh, and so we're, we're all ex excited and looking into uh, that study finishing uh, enrollment and see uh, those results. Uh, there is a, a study 
uh, uh, that looks at a uh, another uh, humanized monoclonal antibody. Uh, uh, <clears throat> again, is uh, human latent myostatin in ambulant FSHD uh, patients, and there is a last there is also a study by uh, Avidity. That's a phase one two uh, uh, trial uh, that's uh, also using a monoclonal antibody that binds the transferrin uh, receptor conjugating with uh, uh, an siRNA targeting the DUX4 uh, messenger RNA. And so uh, we're, we're looking forward to uh, those uh, studies. Uh, those are some of the active studies, but again, you could find uh, more and you could use the links to uh, help you uh, decide a site that's closer to you. So some take home points, I think, uh, I hope uh, I, 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 I convince you that there is, there is significant variability in the severity of FSHD. And although the pattern of weakness is predictable in most, there are some atypical uh, variants and particularly in those uh, uh, individuals, genetic confirmation is going to be important for the uh, diagnosis. Uh, there is uh, data about the beneficial effect of aerobic uh, exercise and, and strength exercise can also be done. But again, we should uh, 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 work with a skilled or experienced uh, physical uh, therapist familiar with the uh, disease because uh, to have an individualized uh, program. Most individuals with uh, FSSD might benefit from adaptive equipment, and this is also uh, uh, important to keep in mind. Uh, pain is uh, a significant uh, problem in the FSSD uh, population and, and probably uh, uh, an area for, for, for additional uh, studies in terms of uh, looking specifically at uh, different interventions to see how uh, uh, people uh, respond. Uh, surgery is also for selected uh, patients. Uh, and, and, and I think the two main uh, messages at the end is going to be one about taking an active role in your care and treatment, that multidisciplinary approach, that's proactive care, I think is uh, 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 critical. Uh, also, uh, consider participating in, in, in research. There are a lot of uh, still unanswered uh, questions and gaps in the uh, medical uh, knowledge. And so uh, regular follow-ups in the uh, uh, clinic, as well as uh, participation in uh, research uh, are all uh, things to uh, consider. I think I will stop at this stage and I will thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you so much. Maybe you can unshare your slides so we can uh, get everybody big on the screen again. Great. Thank you so much. That was a great overview. Um, before we launch into the many patient questions that are being posted, I was wondering if the our audience if uh, could let us know if you have been diagnosed within the last say two years, or if you know somebody, a family member who's been diagnosed within the last two years, could you just um, raise your hand, which is um, using the virtual hand. You, you go to the bottom of your screen, there's a reactions link. And if you press on that and open it, uh, there's a raise hand little thing that you can press on and raise your hand. So I'm curious to know how many people have been recently diagnosed. Um, great, thank you. And uh, we'll look at those results later. But um, in the meantime, we have many, many questions. Uh, so let's get started with that. Um, okay, here's a question. Someone wants to know what is, how do you know what is the right amount of activity to undertake? Uh, and how do you know when it's too much? Is it when you have? Yeah, so there are some general rules. And, and so uh, that I used in general when somebody have weakness and they are doing exercise. And so uh, the, uh, some of the rules is really uh, 
if you are hurting for more than 24 hours or uh, 24 or 48 hours after an exercise program that tells you that you are you overdid it so your body is basically is your your uh, uh, biological clock to tell you uh, if you did is is more but I, I usually favor uh, working at least before you uh, have uh, that uh, exercise program that you're going to do on a regular basis is to work with a physical service who's going to uh, help you tailor that to your, to your side. Definitely any exercise is better than no uh, exercise. And so even if you're not able to get to the uh, recommended amount of time and the frequency, then you could still uh, 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 perform uh, uh, exercise and build your way up as time uh, goes. I have a question here from someone uh, who apparently if, asks, if you were diagnosed later in life, let's say after age 50, will your symptoms stay on the mild side or will it be more progressive or I guess progress faster because of aging you know, compounding the symptoms? And so, what yeah. Yeah. That's a good question, absolutely. And I think, uh, uh, again, it takes me back to what I was saying earlier about how variable it is and how difficult it is to be able to uh, predict with certainty how everybody is going to do. But for the most part, uh, the, 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 the change is really slow and the change is slowly progressive. But again, uh, there are times where we see in clinic that uh, people who did have some accelerated loss of uh, uh, function. Uh, there are a number of questions here about nutrition uh, and dietary recommendations. Well, that's really one of the uh, uh, excellent uh, questions that we do uh, get uh, always in the in the clinic, there's no doubt that good nutrition uh, can be a challenge for uh, people living with uh, muscular dystrophy in general, and in particular uh, uh, FS, uh, FSHD. And so the 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 uh, so so the the uh, a balanced diet is probably going to be a good way. Of to start now, what does that mean? That's just basically uh, 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 hand waving there by saying it is it is a balanced uh, diet. But uh, the, 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 there is uh, uh, so I, I usually will have people work with a dietitian. Uh, they might they increase they, they look at their uh, caloric uh, needs. Uh, they will make sure that they are receiving. Uh, the calories that they uh, need. They, uh, they, there is a room for increased protein uh, uh, content in the uh, diet, and 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 those are really the main, the main, the main, the main things. There are certain things that we also do recommend, and as I alluded to earlier, is the vitamin D supplementation, and so to be tested the vitamin D level, and you could go on the uh, supplementation similarly. Uh, uh, um, calcium. With regard to other supplements, there is uh, uh, no consensus in general in the field, and you will see people who are really interested in the uh, role of supplements in FSHP and others who uh, believe that supplements aren't really making a major uh, difference. And I usually take really the, the middle way. Many of the supplements that are out there are, are not necessarily harmful, and I think they could definitely be uh, uh, tried. And so uh, I, I usually would recommend a, a multivitamin uh, uh, a day, but there are things out there like creatine and some of the uh, antioxidants, and there are uh, uh, some certain studies that are out there that could be uh, 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 could be could be used on individualized basis. Question here from an individual who was diagnosed at age 65. Um, 
doesn't seem to have any family members with apparent symptoms, but he's concerned about passing on the disease, uh, the genetics to adults. Yeah, so, I, I, so one of the things we mentioned is that the spontaneous mutation or the, what we refer to as de novo mutations can occur in around 10 to 30% of the uh, uh, individuals. And so uh, that's really the, 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 the case. And so if it is FSHD type one, then, then, uh, uh, then there is a chance of, of transmitting uh, that to offspring. And I think I would, uh, again, in our clinic setting at the Ohio State University, uh, we usually have our genetic counselor as part of the uh, team will work uh, through those different uh, scenarios to make the uh, decision about what would be uh, best in terms of uh, testing. And, and again, uh, when I'm, uh, this also makes me bring another point about, about uh, sometimes uh, there are people who do have very mild uh, involvement. And so they might look normal, but maybe with a, a close examination, you might be able to see uh, some of the subtle features or subtle signs of the uh, disease. Right. And if they are very subtle and think they don't have FSHD, they could still have the genetics and still pass it on to yes, someone. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So it is, a bit more severely. Yes. Yeah. So there is also a small subset of people who are completely asymptomatic. You're absolutely right. Um, someone is uh, wanting to know if um, there's any information about hormone therapy for women and its impact in FSHD. Do you have any? I don't. I really, I don't. And again, those are some of the areas as an FSHD community. And we went through this with the SME community. There are a lot of questions that are out there that are relevant day to day. Uh, things like supplements, things like uh, what's what's appropriate nutrition? Things like uh, 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 exercise, and I think those are all uh, collectively uh, very important to look at. A question from someone who wants to know: What actually happens to the muscles in FSHD? Do they just atrophy, and they can they be built so, back up? So we do have uh, uh, two, two things that give us a little bit about the, the muscles. So you do have, we do have the MRIs. And so MRIs are used as one of the biomarkers in research. And the MRIs showed us several things. It did show us that the muscles can be, uh, 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 the affected muscles can be, uh, we could see uh, fibrous and fatty uh, uh, tissue. Uh, infiltration of those of those muscles, and so that's really uh, one one of the things. And actually, those MRI studies were uh, showed us some 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 interesting and unique uh, things. They are not prime time for the clinic, but from a research perspective, they showed that that there are certain muscles that are really involved early in the uh, disease. Uh, uh, they, they are they are involved early in the disease and they're not clinically apparent as weak uh, muscles. There are also uh, certain muscles that are essentially almost involved in everybody, and there are certain muscles that are essentially spared. And 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 those are all very uh, uh, good uh, points from 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 a research perspective. Now, when you when you do a muscle biopsy. Uh, you could see changes that are related to the uh, uh, muscle destruction. You could see evidence of inflammation in some of the of the of the patients. So yes, so this is really what you get. There are different stages. It's not all uh, the same. Here's a question. Uh, I have had two incidents of SVTs, a supraventricular tachycardia. Could this be FSHD connected? Yeah, and so the question is is always uh, uh, is is I I, uh, I I trained with with Dr. John Kissel. There's a lot of people you if you might know the, uh, John John uh, uh, Kissel. He was my my mentor, 
and and he told me to say never say never and 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 basically there is always a uh, 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 time so yes so those studies that are done that show the abnormalities are really uh, short scale uh, uh, small size studies and so on but i think the general rule is probably not but that does not mean that in that particular case, the SVT, particularly if it is symptomatic. So what we usually do in the clinic is we probably we don't go in doing EKGs and echoes or cardiac MRIs on a regular basis. But uh, on, on the other hand, if anybody is having symptoms referring to the heart like uh, palpitations or chest pain or, or shortness of breath, that will, will uh, uh, be a reason to do that. Now, another point I also uh, uh, always say is having one disorder does not protect you from other problems. So, so uh, uh, as we age, uh, we're more likely to have hypertension and diabetes and hypercholesterolemia and metabolic syndrome. And so that also makes us at risk of developing other uh, cardiac uh, illnesses. And so that's really also make me plug in for the importance of also establishing care and following with uh, your primary care uh, physician and making sure that you're getting all age appropriate uh, screens and uh, all uh, testing. That's a great place to conclude today's uh, meeting. We are out of time. We have a lot of questions, so perhaps uh, you could answer them offline if I send you an email with some of the questions that we didn't have a chance to get to. That would be wonderful. And I'll bring back Beth. Happy to do that. Hi there. Well, um, thank you so much, Dr. El Sheikh. That was wonderful. Thanks everyone for attending our webinar today. Um, very special thank you to Dr. El Sheikh for all this amazing information, answering all of our questions. Um, as you know, being newly diagnosed is can, can be scary. And so thank you so much for um, all of this great information. Um, we we'll, actually will not be hosting an FSHD University webinar in June, as we will be busy hosting the annual International Research Congress and the World FSHD Alliance meetings in Milan, Italy in June. So that's very exciting. Um, our next FSHD webinar is on July 20th, when Michaela Walker from the University of Kansas is going to be speaking about the ongoing MOVE and MOVE Plus studies that Dr. Elsheik just told us about. Um, they are the largest natural history studies ever done on FSHD, so they're pretty interesting. Um, other than that, just be sure to visit our website events calendar for all of the upcoming chapter, wellness, educational events. And uh, thank you again, Dr. Elsheik, for being with us today and everyone else for joining. And we will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank Bye -bye. you so much.